This week, I read Adams versus Jefferson, The Tumultuous Election of 1800 by John Furling. First, I would like to talk a little bit about John Furling. He is a leading authority on late 18th and early 19th century American history. He graduated from Sam Houston State with a Bachelor of Arts degree in history, as well as Baylor University with a Master of Arts degree in history. He is also the author of many books, including this one, and others such as Independence, The Ascent of George Washington, Almost a Miracle, and Setting the World Ablaze. So, for the book, Adams vs. Jefferson, the thesis is that Furling, in this book, re-examines the events and people involved in factional politics throughout the 1790s that shaped the outcome of the election of 1800. He begins this by examining Jefferson and Adams in the engulfing situations such as the Alien and Sedition Acts among the context of competing political factions through the 1790s. Furling provides context on the tension and dirty, dirty politics of the election of 1800. This political infighting included the continuation of the use of press as a weapon against the opposition, such as the Kentucky and Virginia resolutions that appeared in response to the Alien and Sedition Acts, as well as peculiar alliances that emerged, such as Hamilton's public denunciation of Adams leading up to the election of 1800. So naturally, after providing this context, he turns his attentions to the election of 1800. First, Furling attributes the Republican manipulation of the Electoral College, such as introducing the concept that the winner of the popular vote in a state should receive all of that state's electoral votes, as a vital role in the Republican takeover of the executive branch. With Jefferson and Burr then tied for the electoral vote, Verling, Verling then attributes secret dealings in Congress to Jefferson's ultimate election, and then the ensuing Revolution of 1800, which transformed the nation into a more egalitarian nation with subsequent Republican presidents veering away from the Federalist agenda of the 1790s. Furling's work created an interesting and probably intentional parallel to the divisive partisan politics and political smearing of today. However, this also provides the possibility of presentism being at play in the conclusion drawn towards the end of the book, which basically means that Furling was possibly projecting the issues of today onto the conclusions he drew at the end of the book, especially looking at the political smearing and infighting going on. However, I still believe that overall, this is an excellent book which highlights the political tensions and dirty politics of the 1790s resulting in this tumultuous election of 1800 with Adams versus Jefferson, basically the Republicans taking over after all these years of fighting the Federalists who were in power.